another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice. Interesting episode today, a very cool topic, I think. We're going to get over your midlife crisis. Now, before you before you check out, you're like, I'm not having a midlife crisis. If you're not now, you might soon. So check this out. I have Leslie King with me, a career empowerment coach, and we're going to talk about just how to figure out who you are, where you're going. Are you in the right place? Are you going to the right place? A lot of questions to unpack here. So before we go further, Leslie, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much, Brandon. Great to be here. So when I when I first saw Career Empowerment Coach, um, I had a couple of questions. First of all, let's let's unpack this for a minute before we dive in. Like, what what do you do as a career empowerment coach? So a lot of people feel stuck in their careers because they don't know what to do next. They thought that this was going to be the career that they wanted because you know, as kids, we're asked, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" Not, "How do you want to live." Where do you want to live? What's important to you? What are your values? And so you get in these careers that you think are going to bring you lots of money or they sound cool or somebody told you it would be good at that. And you do that and then you're like, wow, I don't like this at all. Or this isn't the lifestyle I want. Or who am I in this career? And then you don't know what to do next because you've spent time educating yourself for it or whatever. And so now you're in this career. You don't like it. Now what? And that's what I help people with, figuring out what's next. I, I I think this applies to business owners too because it applies to yeah. everything. Because when you know yeah. what you want, then you can go and do anything. I help people really get into knowing who they are. You know, we look back at their skills and their accomplishments, and you know, there's so many things that we take for granted that we do that you need to celebrate and you need to realize are an extremely great skill to have and that's unique to you over anyone else. So it's a great thing. Yeah, I'm just thinking of you know some clients that that we've had or people that I've talked to. I'll put myself in this category too. I had a business that I sold last year that I I should have done this work ahead of time because I it wasn't right for me, and that's why I ended up selling and getting out of the industry. But if if we start with intention and we kind of unpack this for ourselves, you could save a lot of headache and and heartache too, and cost along the road. But I, I'm also thinking back to like pre-college. Oh yeah. We got to we got to start unpacking this because it, all of these things are spinning in my head. So h- how do you start with people like what do you start to unpack to really figure out like what who they are and what's next for them? It's all just a bunch of questions. You know, it's like what does work mean to you? What does life mean to you? What's important to you? And those are the things that we're not asked as kids. It's all like, what are you going to do when you grow up? How are you going to make that much money? What do you want next? You know, where are you going to buy your house? Whatever. It's all about such consumer society. And there's so much more to the world and to our lives than consuming and making money. I mean, yes, money comes when you're happy with what you do. Money comes when you know what you're, when you're doing something that you really care about. So those are the kind of things that are really important. And, you know, as kids, we're just said, hey, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I mean, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I worked in film production for 20 something years. And when I first started to get into film production, I had gone to college and I thought I was going to either be a director, an editor, um, you know, camera. I mean, there were just limited skills, limited jobs that I thought that you had on a film set or in that field. And when you look at movie credits, look at all those people on that set you know there are hundreds of people on the set and there's so many different specialized positions and you don't realize that that that's in every industry so if there's something that you love to do you can find it in whatever industry that is you want to be in so i think that that's something that people don't realize either and when you're when you get out of school who tells you how to get a job they're like yeah good luck you got your degree now and so now it's like all of those things are parts of the dilemma once you get out of college or once you get out of school you're like now what do i do and that's what i help people find when you know who you are you can make anything happen and even when it comes to businesses like buying the right business or doing the right business is an important part of it yeah and i'm I'm thinking too like 
obviously you should start before college, before you really take that, that sort of a financial leap. You should start asking yourself that those kind of questions. But I'm also thinking, because you said you typically work with people in their their 30s and above, it's probably easier to figure out where you want to go if you have some of that experience and you know like what feels wrong to you. Am I right? Also, it's one of those things where when you're you're just getting to college and you just know it all, you know, teenagers know it all. And then you go to college, you're like, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. And you have people that you talk to, but you don't necessarily know what you're doing. Then once you're out in the world and you start experiencing things and you're like, okay, this is interesting and this is different than I thought and all of that. So it's just a different place to be when you're, when you've actually been in the workforce. So you can actually evaluate and say, oh, I don't like this part and I like this part. You know, So there's always going to be things we don't like about certain jobs, but you need to have most of it that you like. Yeah, I, and that's fair. I mean, you, nothing in life is ever going to be 100% enjoyable, and that's that's okay, that, but it shouldn't be like 0% enjoyable. I think that's a little bit different, and we should explore that a little. And so, it shouldn't stress you out either. It shouldn't. Right. You shouldn't be like Sunday night, you shouldn't be like, oh. I got to get up and make the donuts tomorrow. You know, it's like, no, we don't want that. You know, we want you to get excited about going to work. And yes, the weekends are important. Time off is important, you know, but it's also important that you enjoy at least 30% of your life, which is what you work. Mm, that's a good, that's a good benchmark. At least, at least 30% of your life. I would hope it's a little bit more than that, but well, your work is 30% of your life. If you're doing yeah. 40 hours, 30% is sleeping, 30% is work. And then 30% is your, your free time. So if you get off work and you're unhappy, that bleeds into your free time on your drive home. You're angry. Somebody cuts you off. You're angry. You're angry. You're angry. You're angry and that just ripples out. My goal is to make the world a better place. So to do that, if you're happy at work, you're driving home and somebody wants to come out at the, you're stopped and they want to come out and join you in traffic. You're like, come on over. No problem at all. You get home like, hi, how are you? It's great to see you. You have better relationships with your friends, your family, your children, every part of your life. And that ripples, you know, good ripples. Just like yeah. that. Let's keep no, it. You know? let's, yeah. Let's ripple good. I'll tell you what though. I have three little kids. I do not enjoy the 30% of sleep. That if I could outsource that portion, because they always wake up, uh, but the other is 70%, we're, we're spot on. So that's awesome. Um, but I'm curious how we can use this in, I'm thinking from a from a business owner and a leader perspective, like how can we use this sort of a tool in hiring or even you know, in engaging and developing our own employees? Like, have you ever done that? Have you ever been brought into a company to kind of get ahead of this so you don't have employees leaving? No, but it is important that you know what you want from your employees. Mm -hmm. And people think that they're hiring for skills when it's really attitude and it's really who they are as people. And so your values are important. Their skills are important. You know, what's important to them is really important because then you know if that's going to align with your company. So if you're a small business owner, knowing your values, that's really an important part. And do we take time to do that all the time? Not necessarily. I did a coffee shop and I hired people and, you know, sometimes it was like, oh, they look like they'll be good. Let's hire them because you just wanted an employee. You're like, oh God, I just need an employee. But then other times you found the perfect people and you're like, oh my gosh, this is a perfect person. So, but it is about where they want to go, what they want in their lives too. And how does that align with your company and what you want from them? So I'm thinking again, from the perspective of the leader, I, I love to do this sort of work with my employees because I, I don't believe that someone should work for me and not leave better than when they came. And I, I believe that's my responsibility as a leader. Uh, if you're listening and you don't have that mindset, totally fine. Just you might not retain as employees as long or as happy. Um, so what are some of the things, like what, what do you take people through through this process so that we can do it as leaders, we can do this with our team, with our employees, and hopefully get them on the right path, whether that's with us or in, in some other aspect of their life? Right. It's so important to know what they really love. And so evaluation is a huge way of knowing that. Like when you do a week of work, then what did you love this week? You know, what was great about the week? What was fun about the week? And you write down as many things as you can find, at least five. And then you're like, OK, what didn't work? What didn't I love about the week? And it's good to do it on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, whatever. And then you think, OK, what would I want to do differently? And so you can start thinking about your life in a different way. So you have intention about how you're living. You're deciding that I like this. I don't like this. I want to do more of this and less of this. So sometimes 
you get in a position where you hire somebody and they're not in the right position, but they're the right person for your company. And you might need to move them into a different position. So always keeping up with them and talking to them about what they like and what they like about their job and who they are as people, because that's really what my program is about. It's like, who are you? What are your skills? What have you loved in the past that you haven't really thought about? What are your superpowers? And I know that's like the buzzword right now, but it's true. We all have them. We all have something that we're just so good at. We don't even realize we're good at that. So those are the kind of things that you need to under uncover when you're talking to your employees and bringing them on. It's like, how can I make you happy with what you're doing, make my company better and all of it so that it all works together and everybody grows? Yeah, I think that's the most important because when you're when you're doing things that that doesn't light you up or that that are your superpower, like you said, it just starts to eat at you. Whether, yeah. whether you're the the owner, the leader, the employee, it's just like it's so hard to want to show up to work when you know that 80% of your day is just like pushing papers that no one's going to see. Exactly. It, it's so frustrating. So you said you take people through, what is it, a 90-day process to do this? Yes, 90-day process. I can help you figure out what's next in 90 days. And it's fast, it's fun, and it's easy. It's it's simple, but it's not necessarily easy because it's nice to have somebody talking to you about it. So mm -hmm. we get to a point where we, we get all this information about you, and then we do a brainstorming session, which is so much fun because I'm very creative and I'm very open to new ideas. I keep informed. I go to One Million Cups regularly. I pay attention to what's out there and what's happening in the industries all around the world and locally. And I just go, oh, well, what about this? You know, just trying to think out of the box. Like I just got back from San Francisco 10 weeks in San Francisco because I did a house sit. And somebody, friends of mine told me about this house sit. When their kids were in college, they went around the world and they had no money. They rented out their house and they went from house sit to house sit to house sit where you don't get paid. You just stay at their house for as long as they need you and you've got a free place to stay. And the most expensive part about travel is the location that you're staying in, your housing. So this gives you a free place to stay. So I went to San Francisco and was able to explore all these different things. I still had to take care of a pet. So I had responsibility and unconditional love when I came home. So <laughs> explore all these different things. And it was a different way of traveling on a budget or traveling in a different way. Like 10 weeks in San Francisco would have cost me a fortune, but I got to explore all these things and not, it didn't cost her any money to have me there while she was in Brazil to take care of her dog. And it didn't cost me any money to be there at least, you know, just general living expenses. So it's just, there's ways to do everything that you want to do as long as you know what it is that you want to do. I, that's awesome. Because when I hear stuff like that, I, I mean, our whole thing here at our company, what if is, is asking questions, but asking better questions that get you to stretch your brain noodle, as I say. And I've, I've never heard of that idea, but it sounds, it sounds amazing and terrifying all at the same time. Like what if someone kills my dog by accident? Anyway, we're not going to cross that bridge uh, if we don't have to, but it, that reminds me of the movie. Have you ever seen the movie, the holiday? Yes. With, with uh, Cameron they Diaz in it. Yeah. They, and they do that. I didn't think that was a real thing. I thought it was just like it happened in that movie. And it was. Oh, I mean, they're definitely this trusted house sitters that I use, trustedhousesitters.com. It's um, international. And I know people that go from house to house to house. It, you know, and I've so even cool. met people locally, like at bars or something or at networking events. Yeah. I'm like, so what are you doing here? And they're like, oh, I'm here doing a house sit with trusted house sitters. I'm like, oh, well, cool. I met people that work it. So um, it's just really fun. It's just a different way of living. You know, and that's really what it's about is you get to design your life yeah. and you get to think out of the box to design your life. And I'm so good at thinking out of the box. So it's really great to have different ideas and to like the trusted house sitters. I can't tell you how many people I've told about that that never knew about it before. So it's like it gives you new options. And, you know, once you start to think differently, you can make anything happen. Mm, definitely. So what are some ways you get people to think differently during this brainstorming session? Like, do you do you prompt them or you just like let it flow? Well, I do the flow. I have them come up with dreams. I'm like, all right, dream. And I want you to write down 50 ideas, you know, just anything. I want to go to the moon. I want to be an astronaut. I want to, you know, live at the bottom of the ocean. Who knows? Just write anything that sounds wacky down. And then we sort of find, you know, with all of the other work that we've done about what they like and their values and their skills and all that kind of stuff, we start to look at those things and look at the patterns that they have. So when it comes to brainstorming, like I like the outdoors. So then we go to the outdoors. Like, what do you like? I like to hike. I like to take people on hikes, you know, and then you just go from there and just go wild. You know, you just open it up and you just keep going down those different 
different ways in different streams. What is it? Different ideas. And you come up with new ideas. Mm. So and it's nice to have somebody help you with that and guide you through it because I can think of different things. Like, what about this? Oh, I never thought about that. You know, so it's fun. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, the benefits of having somebody else there who's not in your life, yeah. it's got to be huge because when typically in a brainstorming session, there will come a time where you just start to go down a rabbit hole and it's like a dead end and then you really can't see your way back. So that's, that's, it's really beneficial to have you there. But then what's the next part is obviously the execution, right? If we have right. all these ideas now, now what? what happens is we pick three, we pick three that sound like perfect ideas for you. So it gets to that point where we get to three ideas and then I have you research each of those ideas and really talk to people that were doing those things or that are close to doing those things. And so you see what the life is like, like film production. It was a blast to work in film production, but there were things about film production that were not for me, like the lifestyle. It was a really long day. And it was very, um, you couldn't work on, like when I worked on a movie or I worked on a TV show for like nine months, all you had was that TV show. So that wouldn't really help with the lifestyle that I wanted. I liked more balance in my life. And so those are the kind of things that you go and talk to these people about. What's it like to work in this field? What's it like to move up? Where would I go? What could I do? How does that look? You know, what do your day-to-day -day stuff look like? And those are just informational interviews, which anyone will tell you to do. And they're really interesting because it brings up other ideas for you and it tells you new things to do. So it's always a very interesting process. And then when you finally decide what it is you want, then we start to talk about a resume and all that kind of stuff. And I help you get to your next step. But my goal is to just to help you figure out what's next. And then I have people I can refer you to for resumes because resume writing is very specific nowadays. So to have somebody that's just focused on that is perfect. And then if you want help finding that next job and helping with your mindset along the way, I am perfect for that too. You know, supporting you and encouraging you and, you know, Make sure that you're not saying no to things like that's huge in the brainstorming session. Oh, that's not going to work. I don't care if you think it's not going to work. We're still writing it down because how do you know? Airbnbs. You want to hear what they said about Airbnbs? Like that is crazy. Ubers. I just rode in a uh, driverless car. People think that's crazy. <laughs> Wait five years, guys. It'll be everywhere because, you know, there are people drive. People are crazy or they're always on their phones. The, dri <laughs> the driverless car is not on its phone. Uh, I've been in some Ubers where I'd prefer if it was driverless. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> nothing against Uber. Just, you know, it's okay. I'd be okay with it. Um, but no, I like that. And I think that's, that's really cool. So I want, I'm curious. I mean, you, you must have some, some really cool, unique success stories. Like, um, can you give me a sense of like people come in, they feel lost. And then on the back end, they're, a professional skydiver now and they were an accountant before like what what comes from working? there was one guy sbi the um the you know bureau of investigation state bureau of investigation and he was so ready to leave and he had no idea but he was very skilled he was very competent so he decided to open a franchise and so he opened a franchise um it's like cleaning rugs and such like that. So he's starting his own business. And that's basically what it is, a business owner. So instead of other people telling him what to do, now he's going to be telling others what to do. So he's doing very well. Um, I had a person that was doing, that started her own cleaning business because she's like, I just need to come up with something that's going to make a difference. And she's like, I don't want to work for somebody doing cleaning. And then she was like, oh, I feel bad that I'm doing a cleaning business. I'm like, you are a business owner. This is a great thing. So just little things like that will get you to the next step, you know, and, and they're always, I'm just trying to think of, of course, I'm blank now on all the, all the things that people are doing, but you know, like even people that are ready to change the position that they're in and know what they want, it's still hard to make those changes. So I help them with that too. So navigating through the change is always the hardest because our brain wants to keep us on the same path, but change is inevitable and it is so exciting. I agree. And this is, I, I love this topic because I never really thought about it from the, the personal side of things, especially for employees too. But the process that we take our clients through, it literally starts here because you can't, you can't move your company forward and you can't bring change about in your company if you don't do these exact things. I mean, we start with your core values as your company, right? How are you going to hire people if you don't have core values? If you don't, if they don't know if their core values align with yours and then your mission, and then your vision, you have to know where you are, why you are, what you are and where you're going. Right. And when you do that from a personal level, I, I can see, I mean, we do it with our clients who are typically the business owners, but 
when you do it across the board, imagine if everybody in your company had their own personal core values, mission statement, and vision for their own lives, and you could weave that into your company's mission and vision. I mean, you're going to be an unstoppable organization in a very short period of time. So Leslie, I appreciate this episode. I put your website, Leslie King and Power on the screen. It'll also be wherever you're watching or listening in the show notes. Uh, tell me who you love working with, who should go to your website and reach out uh, for a consultation. Well, anyone that feels like they're stuck in their job and they don't know what to do. But I, I work a lot with women. Anyone from 30s, 30s up usually is the best because they've had some experiences and they can actually decide what it is they want. But knowing who you are is the most important thing that you could ever do. And to have your employees know who they are and help, and then you could ask, you know, when you go on these interviews, they're like, what are your core values? And do they really know those things? Have they really sat down and looked at them? Are they just writing it down because that's what they want for this job? So knowing who you are is the most important thing to make the life that you want. That's so awesome. If you want to be the best boss ever, the best company owner ever, go to leslikingempower.com and get all of your comp your employees this 90-day sprint session with Leslie and then bring them back together and me and you will work together on integrating them in your company. You'll never lose an employee again. I guarantee it if they're a good fit. That is That could not be more powerful for any company. Leslie, thank you for being here. This is an amazing, amazing topic. Thank you so much, Brandon. Thank you for having me. Of course. And for those of you listening, watching, wherever you are, make sure you subscribe so we can keep bringing these episodes to you. I do this for you. Leslie is here for you. We want to make you a better business owner and business leader and disrupt the way you think every single day on your lunch break. I don't know what a lunch break is, but in theory, some people get those. So keep coming back. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious